In 2018, Bill Hybels decided to retire as lead pastor of Willow Creek Community Church. He named teaching pastor Steve Carter to be his successor. Then a few months later, Hybels was accused of sexual abuse and Steve was faced with one of the hardest decisions of his life. Steve Carter is a best-selling author, lead pastor at Forest City Church, and host of the Craft and Character podcast. As the former co-lead pastor at Willow Creek Community Church, Steve was living the dream until allegations against the founding pastor, Bill Hybels, changed everything. In his book, Grieve, Breathe, Receive, Steve Carter shares how to walk through pain and loss and find healing on the other side. Amen to healing on the other side. Everyone, please welcome to the 700 Club, Steve Carter. Steve, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Ashley. Of course, of course, it's an honor to have you. Let's go back to 2018. That is when you were lead teaching pastor at this church, Willow Creek. It was in Chicago or yes. Illinois. Yep. You know, what was your life like then? What was it like? How was the church thriving then? Yeah, we were a, a church of seven campuses. Um, it was about 25,000 people. Wow. Um, I was, you know, doing uh, chaplaincy for the Chicago Bears. Like, I, wow. you know, so there was just so much where I loved the congregation. Yeah. I love the the city. I love the people. I mm. love my mentor. Mm. And I, I had been working my entire life for this mm. kind of job and yeah. you get it. And then um, the surprise and the shock comes. Yeah, so Bill Hybels was a mentor to you. Yes. He was the lead pastor of the church. Yes. Um, he tapped you as successor. Yeah. I mean, were you expecting that? Like, I, I, I I did not expect it to happen, to be yeah. honest. Um, like, who am I? I'm just a kid from Camarillo, California. Mm. Um, but I, I, I fell in love with the mission of the church. I mm. fell in love with just the chance to serve and pastor. And so yeah. when he tapped myself and um, another person to kind of carry on that legacy, yeah. it was really, really humbling. Yeah. Well, obviously there were some sexual abuse allegations um, against Bill Hybels. I mean, when did you even first hear about all of that? So uh, in October of uh, 2017, I get announced. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until February of 2018, I had submitted a manuscript for a book and it was really gonna be kind of Timothy and Paul's relationship um, and kind of my relationship with Bill. And it was my editor who told me, hey, do you know that a story is coming out in sh the Chicago Tribune about yeah. a pastor? And I was like, what? And mm -hmm. then it felt like every single day, more and more yeah. information was coming out once that story went public. Well, you ended up meeting with these victims. Yep. And I guess just walk us through that. Like, how did that happen? What was that like for you? Yeah, you, you, when you find yourself in like a crisis, you, it's, it's hard to discern. It's hard to know who do I trust. Mm. And I realized that what was happening at Willow was everyone was kind of like circling the wagons, mm. preserving and protecting. Right. And I, I just found myself wondering, I don't know these women's stories. And mm -hmm. so I was able to show up to their home, wow. talk to them on the phone, um, and they graciously shared the stories with me. And mm. once I heard their stories, I realized, oh wow, there's this, this is truth mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is God's house. This is his church. Yeah. I don't wanna play with people's trust. How do we actually do what the t text teaches us? The scriptures teach us to be honest and human with our brokenness mm -hmm. and really be a voice and advocate for the voiceless mm -hmm. and the victims. And so that's kind of what I tried to step into. Yeah. And um, I was grateful uh, for those women that um, they could at least as the courage that they took yes. feel honored and seen. They're absolutely courageous. Well, what happened when you went to church leadership about all of this? Yeah, they were in this tension and the tension kind of was, this is the guy who married us. This is the guy who baptized us. This has mm. been the guy who's been our pastor. So they're in this cognitive dissonance of, mm. do I actually trust what these women are saying, wow. do yeah. I, and they found themselves just trying to really preserve yeah. the institution rather than be a voice for the victims. Why do you think, I mean, this is not the first time that we've heard that people don't believe the victims. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because they don't want to believe mm. that it's true. Mm. They don't mm. want to feel like they were complicit mm -hmm. to building something that 
actually hurt people mm -hmm. and they don't know how to connect with the reality where there might be 85% good mm. and 15% bad. And the truth is we're all human. We're all in need of the Savior. We're all yeah. in need of grace and peace yeah. and th found through Christ. But we don't always know how to be very honest about that. Mm. Well, I just want to say thank you for listening to the victims and believing them because that takes a lot of courage. Another amazingly courageous thing that you did is you chose to walk away. Talk about that. I mean, that's a lot of what your book is about. I mean, that blew up your life. Yeah. Talk about that. I guess my dream job, like I said, I saw the future. But then one morning on a Sunday morning before I'm getting ready to go to church, a uh, New York Times article breaks with another story mm. about my mentor. Wow. And I just found myself going, I can't go back on stage, play with people's trust. We have to name sin. Mm -hmm. We have to tell our people. We have to be a voice and do what the Bible teaches us. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't feel like they were going to handle that in the right way, mm -hmm. I decided to resign. Yeah. And I resigned over a, a blog post and just basically saying, hey, I. I can't step in line with this. Mm. And it really led me to the desert, yeah. uh, literally and metaphorically, yeah, literally to, try, and metaphorically. <laughs> to try and figure out what do I do when, when life does what it so often right. does, when it exactly. shocks us. Yeah, and then also during this time, your father passed away. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. I mean, how were you able to cope and move forward in this time in your life? Actually, I don't, I don't know how. Honestly, it was eight months after I lose my spiritual father, I lose my earthly Ooh, father. Gosh. And there's like, there was a moment I looked up at the heavens and I was like, Lord, I don't have anything more. Mm. I don't have any more capacity for sadness and yeah, loss. Right. And yet God really, really met me in mm. that time. Yeah, he spoke something specifically to you. Can you share that? Yeah, there were these three words, grieve, breathe, receive. Mm. And that kind of was at the heart of the book. Yeah. I, I knew how to achieve. I just didn't know how to grieve. And one, yeah. one night he woke me up in the middle of the night and said, you can't achieve your way out of this. Oof. You can only grieve your way through it. And I'll never forget just journaling that. And I realized, well, I, I gotta do some soul searching mm. to actually recognize so much of the Psalms are about yeah. lament right. and actually <laughs> sadness and grief. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to do it. I knew how to set goals. Yeah. I knew how to chase. I knew how to go yeah. after, but to actually sit and trust mm. God with the sadness, I needed to learn. Why do you think so many of us, I mean, look, we all go through grieving seasons. Yeah. Why do you think it's so hard for us to just sit in our grief? I mean, I can speak from my personal experience. It's like, I, that's the last thing I wanna yeah, do right, is right, sit in right. my grief and mourning, but that's actually sometimes the best thing we can do. It is, I, I think we don't like to be out of control. Mm. So sometimes yes. if we have to be honest with our grief, yeah. then what we're, what we're actually doing is having to surrender our control yeah. of the feelings and the emotions. Yeah. And then also, we don't know what we have to do next in the next mm -hmm. afternoon or the next meeting. And they're like, I don't wanna be out of control emotionally. Right. So we just stuff and minimize. Yeah. But here's the truth. You're gonna have to pay rent on that grief mm. at some point and it will come. And it usually yeah. doesn't come at the best time. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Well, Steve, I mean, we could talk for hours, but the last thing I wanted to ask you is what is your life like today? Like, what are you up to? Yeah, so we moved for four years to the desert. It was a healing season. And then God does what God often does. He surprised us and had us move all the way back to Chicagoland. Wow. And we're back and we're pastoring, mm -hmm. we're serving. Mm -hmm. uh, my kids are happy to be back in Chicagoland. Oh, cool. And yeah. uh, God is so good. Amen. And you also have a podcast, right? I do. What is it called? It's called Craft and Character mm. and kind of work to help people get better at the craft of preaching while always ensuring that their character leads the way. Mm. Amen. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for your boldness, your mm. courage, and thank you for just being open and honest and transparent. Awesome. I know it's helping a lot of people. Thank yeah, you. God bless you. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, if you've experienced just a devastating loss or a betrayal of any kind, Steve's book is for you. It is called Grieve, Breathe, Receive, and it's available nationwide. Also, make sure you guys check out his podcast.